So in this video, I want to talk about being vulnerable. And uh, to me, vulnerability is a very powerful principle that men need to learn. And I'm not talking about neediness. So many dating coaches say don't be vulnerable. What they're actually saying is don't be needy. I believe personally that vulnerability is uber attractive and one of the most attractive qualities a man can display to a woman when it's done properly, when it's done the way I'm going to be talking about in this call. Now, I'm going to dive into it pretty quick, but before I do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, and share. Definitely comment uh, in the video if you find anything you really want to comment on. Those comments really help us to get a conversation going and to grow the channel. I'm always checking them out. So let's dive in. What do I mean by this? Oh, by the way, I'm out in uh, Hawaii. I just arrived in Hawaii. This is uh, Honolulu. Uh, this is close to Waikiki this morning. Actually, Waikiki Beach is over that way a little bit. And this morning, I, uh, I took a walk and watched the sunrise. I was resetting my circadian rhythm and I uh, got up and watched the sunrise on Waikiki Beach. It was beautiful. I might do it again tomorrow. I'll see if I can get some shots. Um, awesome it's awesome to be here tomorrow i fly to hilo hawaii for a music event well, learning to write songs and sing and i'm i was invited there by my friend he's throwing on the event and i'm super excited it's in a big house on the ocean off of the big island so that'll be a lot of fun we'll see if i can get some video clips from there now with that said let's talk about this vulnerability thing i've talked about it before i've talked about it a lot and um I was sitting here thinking today, what video do I want to give you guys? Because I don't have a lot of time and I do need to get some more suggestions for videos down below. And I need to go through and really figure out some videos that can help you guys to grow. So if you got anything in mind, definitely put it in the suggestions. I saw one about rejection, so I may get to that one soon. I was thinking about it. So let's dive in. Let's talk about this vulnerability piece. Um, vulnerability is so powerful. Uh, I had a client once. I want to tell a story. His name is Eddie, that's his real name. I've done interviews with him, I've had him on the channel. Eddie was an amazing client because he spent years learning to pick up women, never got anywhere, right? He was always trying to be perfect. He was always trying to be confident. He was always trying to be masculine, and he was. He could walk up to any woman anywhere and he could be ballsy and he could be forward and he could be cocky and he would say anything, but nothing ever went anywhere. Now, I think a lot of people might have written him off. Eddie's about five foot two little chubby, um, confident and forward like a pit bull, but he just wasn't able to get anything going ever. And I think a lot of people would write it off and say, well, you know, he doesn't have the genetics of a guy that's six foot five and <laughs> killing it with six pack abs. But the truth is, is that, and I think he illustrates it perfectly, is that when you get this vulnerability piece, a lot begins to change. Now, Eddie finally did figure this out. We had to do a lot of work because he had a lot of insecurities inside. He really didn't want to be vulnerable with women. He wanted to be perfect. So I want to ask you guys, how many of you guys can relate to this idea of being perfect? I need to be perfect so I can get women. Perfect muscles, perfect job, say all the perfect things. And I'm going to figure it all out. And when I get it, they'll start to like me. But what if that's not the answer? What if that's not the case? What if being perfect or the attempt to be perfect is the problem. What if when you get perfect, let's say you were able to get the perfect height, the perfect muscles, perfect job, perfect amount of money, and you were able to get all these women. Let me ask you a question. How long before you would start to feel unhappy? Maybe even miserable, maybe even super sad because in reality, none of these women would be liking you for you, right? They'd be liking you for whatever character display you put on. And you'll begin to become very bitter with women. You'll begin to look at them differently. And you, when you draw women, your RAS will find women that would want those qualities in you. They would be looking for this perfect guy, these materialistic women that would want your money or your looks or whatever you're putting out that you think is perfect. And you'll start to validate that in the world. You'll start to think all women are gold diggers. All women are manipulators. But what if that's not true? What if you're only drawing to you the section of women or the type of women out there that match the vibration you're putting out? By trying to be perfect, the women you are getting when you start to get perfect are women that are also playing this kind of game. Either they're very needy uh, or they're narcissistic or something like that. Some type of match to the energy you're putting out. Now, what if you, if you wanted somebody, let's say, that was secure attached based on attachment theory, right? 
that was really solid, the closer you get to secure attached, you start to heal your inner wounds and you start to become vulnerable in a healthy, strong, masculine way. You start to become real. You start to own your emotions. That's what vulnerability is, part of it is. You stop apologizing for being, even if you are sad or hurt, then you're gonna to start to draw a whole different type of woman. As you become more secure, you're gonna draw a more secure woman. Here's the interesting thing with that. Once you draw women like that, and you start to step out of the matrix, this YouTube world of all women are gold diggers, um, or for women, all men are X or whatever, you're gonna to start to see that there's a whole nether group of women out there. You're gonna to start to hang out with those women, guys that think like that, and this world where everybody's manipulating each other to get ahead is going to start to disappear for you. But you have to vibrate at that energy first. You have to feel, think like somebody that's successful in this area first. That is the rub. That's the trick. You have to move in that direction. You have to actively look for people like that. As David Data would say, third stage men and women. Men and women that really want to give back to the world that really want to be giving to the world. And that's what vulnerability is. It's about being giving, authentically giving of your most real self. Once we get out of the needy stage of vulnerability. In the needy stage, it repels everybody. If I'm vulnerable, let's go into this, what's needy and not needy with vulnerability. If I am vulnerable from a needy place, you know, oh, I'm so sad, poor me. Oh. Please, or say to a woman, please don't leave. I, I really love you. You're, you're so special. You're so beautiful. That neediness is like repellent. And this is where people get the idea that vulnerability is not good. They get the idea that vulnerability is bad because you that neediness is repellent. If a woman was like that with me and they have been in the past, it does literally cause me to start to see that person different because that person is giving me all their power. They're saying, I'm not happy without you, Brian. I'm nobody without you. And how does it you expect me to see them when they act that way? Now let's shift that. What if somebody was vulnerable in a whole different way? And I'll always remember the first time I did this. It was with a beautiful musician after she got off work and I had to be real with her because we were breaking up. We had broken up. I wanted to let her know how I felt before I left. And I remember being authentic and real. I'd been coached into this by a friend of mine. And he said, just be real with her. And this is how you're going to do it. He explained it. And he said, and if she treats you like shit after that, she's not worth having around. She's not worth having around. And the interesting thing was, was I totally expected to get rejected. I totally expected to be made fun of or to be looked down upon, but the, the literal opposite happened. When I did it, when I walked up and said what I'm about to say to her, which I've said in other videos, so you may have heard it, but I'm gonna say it again. She, turned off her car because she was getting ready to leave, got out of the car and sat down on the back and on the curb with me in the back of the car. And we talked for about 45 minutes. We connected, we bonded, we related so much so that it scared me. You see, back then I was a fearful avoidant on the attachment styles. And so I would lean in, I'd want something, want something, want something. And I started to learn how to let go of that anxiety, that want. And when I got what I wanted, in this case, it was her, uh, I would then want to go into my avoidance side and run away and I kept screwing it up. But I was the one that screwed that up. I was the one that ruined that. So let's dive a little deeper into what I said and what I did. And it was very simple. I walked up to her and I said, hey, I want to talk to you. She was very nervous. She was trying to leave. She got in her car, started her car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was kind of dismissive because I had hurt her really bad. I had said some pretty tough things to her out of insecurity in the past and then and in this case, I had learned a lot from that experience and was ready to be real. This is when I was first learning this stuff and I really wanted to change my life. And I said, no, I really want to tell you something. And she heard it. I saw this like, it's almost like a light bulb went off. She turned off the car, turned right towards me, the car door was open and she said, what? And looked me right in the eyes. And I really felt it in that moment. In that moment, I now had to show up. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, it was just going to go really bad and, and for the future uh, uh, with any chance of me ever getting to know her. So this is what I said to her. I said, look, I'm leaving soon. I'm going to move away. And I want to say something to you before I leave. And if you don't feel the same way, it's okay. But at least I'll know that I can accept. But not saying anything, that's not acceptable. And it's really simple. 
I like you. I care about you. I want to be in a relationship with you. I want to do this. I want to try this again. I want to step in and go for it again. And again, if you don't feel the same way, that's fine. But at least I said my piece. And I said something like that. And then I shut up. And I waited to get rejected, be given an excuse. But she didn't. She got out of the car. She sat down on that curb, like I said earlier. And we ended up talking for about 45 minutes. It shocked me, the difference. And what I've noticed over the years is that when you can, in a masculine way, own your vulnerability, yeah, I'm sad. And I'm not needy to it. I can handle it. I'm sad with courage. Yeah, I'm angry. I'm pissed at you. You can say that right to her. I am angry at you. I'm pissed. But I'm right here. The presupposition, the subtext is I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. Or, yeah, I'm really depressed. But I can handle it. I'm right here. Whatever it is, as a man, if you can handle it, you can walk into it. There's a sense that, well... I would love your connection. I'd love for you to give me a hug or bond in this moment with me. But if you don't, I will still handle it. I'm a man. I can show up and handle my shit. The more attractive you become. Now, a lot of you might be thinking that's odd. But the truth is, is I've noticed it with women. When women do that to me, when they really own their emotions, they feel them but own them, I get more attracted to them too. See, vulnerability, when somebody is not needy, when they own it, when they don't apologize for it, male or female, is shockingly powerful. When somebody cries and it's cathartic and it's real and they're having a moment and they're touched by something, you ever notice that women go, ah, and they just, they get attracted more? Uh, how about the great seducers like James Dean or, and I talk about him all the time, but any really good seducer, when they get embarrassed and they look down and they have this moment and they're feeling down the core of their body and then they come back and look with that, that little embarrassment or that little nervousness. Or when they get sad in a movie and the guy's like sad and he's hurt but he's in it, <sighs> contemplating and it's like that bad boy going through turmoil, right? He's going through something. And again, the women will get really attracted to that. They'll get curious, like, who is this guy? See, emotions are powerfully seductive. And when you own them as a man, when you don't apologize for having them, when you start to go through the emotional scale in the Revealing Mastery course, and you start to learn what it is to feel apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride from courage, you say, what is it to feel apathy from my courage? What is it to feel apathy from acceptance? What is it to feel anger from courage? What is it to feel sadness or fear? What is it to feel worry? What is it to feel judgment from courage? Yeah, I'm judgmental of motherfucker. Yeah, what can I say? I was judgmental today. I was an asshole today. I was a total dick. And you own it with an open heart and you say, you know what? I can be with that. Now you become attractive. Now you become interesting. Now you become somebody that she can really dig into. Because part of her gift, and I want you to think about this, as a woman, is to be able to touch your heart. You know, it's to lead a man to his soul. You know, it's, uh, what is it, that proverb that, well, I don't know if it's a real proverb or not, some people have challenged me on it, is uh, a woman's job, uh, a man's job is to protect a woman so she's free to walk the earth, and a, woman's as a, and a woman's job is to lead a man to his soul. Something like that, some version of that. You guys can put it down in the comments when you find it. It's, it's supposed to be a Native American proverb. Some people have said it's actually not. But it still makes a lot of sense, right? This whole idea that her job is to help you feel and process and see emotions and move through them. But she wants to see you do it in a masculine sort of way. And your job is to help protect her so she's free to walk the earth so she can lead you to these parts of yourself where you're holding back. You ever notice that women have this ability to find that chink in your armor and to help you resolve it if she's a good woman, to help you move through it if she's a good woman? So you think about it, the most successful men in the world usually have a lot of, an amazing woman at their side. And that woman 
helps to take them deeper, to feel more, to process more emotions because that's her barometer. She doesn't do it like a therapist. She does it from her feminine by feeling into and seeing and kind of exposing the deepest parts of yourself. And if she's a really giving, healthy woman, she's gonna help to inspire you to be your best in that process. She's gonna help to expose stuff so you can become a better warrior uh, and and a better have a better ability to go out and, and take on the world for you and her. And because of her, you're gonna become a better success. So this is the power of vulnerability. The power of vulnerability is being able to admit when you're scared and own it and say, yeah, but I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> I remember, and this is kind of an interesting one. I remember the first time I was gonna jump out of an airplane, I was terrified. <laughs> I'd never done it before. My buddy said, let's do it spontaneously. And I was terrified, but I did it anyways. And this sense of pride and self-love that came out of me as I landed was absolutely huge. I remember, it's got so many times are running through my head. The first time I spoke on stage, we, we rented a big venue. It's not the first time I spoke on stage, but the first time I did a big venue, the top of a high rise tower in Vegas. And I, and I worked so hard to put on this perfect talk and, I, and, I, and I, I was meticulous with it. And I'm like, this thing is gonna kill. And I remember it was a two day event. And the first day I, I put on the talk and uh, it, it was good. Everybody applauded, everybody loved it, but I knew something was off. And I'd been following this formula I'd created all day. I obsessed over from my wanting, my chasing, to get it good, to get it great. And I realized this is a live audience. What am I doing? Yeah, this is my bullet point list, but let's just go out and be real with them. Let's drop all the walls and and adjust to them, feel their emotions, get real with them. And I did that, that day, the next day, and God, day two landed. It made day one look like nothing. And it, it was a valuable lesson for me to always learn to be real, to learn to be yourself. And the moment I stopped doing that and I start becoming something that I'm not is the moment that people go, good job, but, but don't always mean it. And sometimes they get repelled if you're really needy. Now, here's the weird thing with vulnerability. You can use banter with vulnerability. You can tell a deep story with vulnerability. You can be sad with vulnerability. You know, <clears throat> I've noticed in the past where I was terrified to tease a girl, play with a girl, banter with a girl, because she didn't start the teasing. And I really wanted to, because I, I like to tease and banter, but I, I, in the past I always needed the women to start it first. And so it was vulnerable for me to crack jokes, be cocky and tease her and be playful with her. And I remember doing that, thinking, oh my God, is this gonna bomb? And when she loved it, because it was what I really wanted to do, I got real and took a risk, it, it worked. I felt the vulnerability when I, was, when I was saying this stuff, when I was leaving voice text doing it at first. But when she started responding, it was amazing. And I have become, addicted to finding the places I don't want to be real with somebody. I don't want to be emotionally authentic with an open heart and weeding those places out. So I want to invite you into this world and invite you to this idea of being vulnerable, of being real with people. And so definitely check out last week's video. We'll put that on the screen here. Um, and definitely comment in the video. We love those comments, helps everybody grow. And remember um, that I want to hear what videos you want me to make. I would love to see a few comments from each of you about what video you want me to make next. I appreciate it. Remember, only the confident really live and I'll see you in the next video.